This, this sermon I have been thinking about and putting off giving for the longest time. And it's entitled, Lead Us Not Into Temptation. And the reason is, I couldn't figure out God leading us into temptation. From Matthew 6, verse 13, it just did not make sense to me that God would lead us into temptation. But Jesus tells us here, and, and I want to read this. This is from the outline prayer. In verse 13, where he, he says to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is the NIV version of this. So I'd like to ask us the question for us to think about in, is that have we ever been tempted and have we ever acquiesced to temptations? And if you have, which I assume that you have as I have, um, where did it come from? And when we think about temptation, what are the things that tempt us most? Because if we're not careful, we're tempted not to think about temptation, and then the result is that we oftentimes end up being tempted. So then the question also is, how do we get led into temptation? You know, Jesus is again is saying, lead us not into temptation. So I'm going to admit up front here that I don't have the exact answer to this, but I am going to pose some questions that will help hopefully help us to understand uh, temptation. And then how often do we succumb to temptation? Now, I have a, in my closet, I say closet, pantry at home, a jar of chocolate-covered almonds. (laughs) Now, Dave's laughing back there. But I'm going to watch him this afternoon when we finish this and I uncover that little tray of, that has plastic, that has the chocolate-covered almonds. And Dave's going to sit back there and go, hmm, should I or should I not? If Susie were here, she would not, you know, all that. And then Dave's hand will begin to creep up like this and he's going to su- succumb to this. We have seen this time and time and time again. And I say that tongue-in-cheek because it's, it's, it's a one small thing, but it speaks to temptation in and of itself. There are things that temp, tempt us. And then, what are our greatest temptations? Um, when we're talking about temptations, it's not just chocolate-covered almonds and the like, but what are our greatest? And then, how important is this prayer in our daily life? So what I'd like to do this morning is to go through an example of temptation, uh, what we know as the temptations of Jesus, and take a look at some of the nuances that we find here, because I think in looking at those particular nuances, we may understand some things that we have not appreciated before. So the temptation that we're talking about, that we're all familiar with, in Matthew chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, we read this, that then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted of the devil. And after <clears throat> fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell him these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, The written man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of, of God. Then the devil <clears throat> took him, to the holy city, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, show yourself, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him, to be very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you'll bow down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. 
And of course, then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. So when we look at this, there's a couple of things that come to my mind. And it's also, this is mentioned in the book of Luke, chapter 4 and verse 1 and 2. One is that he is led by the Spirit to go into, into the wilderness. Now what it says about that is that the temptation, we're going to read about, there are three examples here that we get. That is not all the temptations. We need to recognize that it says for 40 days and 40 nights that he was tempted by the devil. And we also need to understand who the tempter is. And the greatest tempter is the devil. And his working with us and with the world in which we live to bring us to sin. Because the temptation is to sin. In this particular example as well, now, and I'm just imagining, because it's included in this in Luke, that he's taken out there, that he's fasting 40 days, 40 nights, he's in the wilderness, it mentions wild beast, um, he was among the wild beast. Now why mention wild beasts? Because I assume that Satan used those in one way or another to tempt Jesus to do, to act, and to respond. So we find ourselves uh, in that kind of situation because if I were in the wilderness with the wild beast that he would have had, we've got to recognize there would be snakes, scorpions, scorpions lions, bear. You know, those are some of the animals that now would be there. So... How could Satan use those? I think he could use them in a lot of the kind of the horror-like features that we might see in movies today when, you know, wild beast and all of these things uh, to cause Jesus to to do something and to doubt. Now, I want to say this as well. Even though I do not fully understand lead us not into temptation, that is God leading us into temptation, What I do understand is this, Jesus tells me to pray, to pray that I not be led in temptation, and also pray that he would deliver me from the evil one. Now, personally, I have an approach to this, and my approach to this is one, as I say, is to pray that I not be led into temptation because I realize how easily sin does beset us, one. But I also have a very pot, what I consider to be a positive approach. And that is, I also pray and say, thank you for not leading me into temptation. And thank you for delivering me from the evil one. Because I have no idea of how much work you have done on my behalf to keep me from temptation. Because imagine if Satan were to turn loose on us, if God would allow him to turn loose on us every temptation that could come our way. And as I say, with the regularity that Jesus probably encountered in the wilderness. So I, I always try to mention that thank you, because I don't know how much you have delivered, but I am very thankful that you have delivered. So I do pray that. And I try to pray that on a daily basis and often. And then I try to to elevate it to the rank of recognizing that it's important and to bring it up into my mind, to my consciousness of how temptations can come. Now, why would we want to be led into temptation? Stop and think about that. Have we ever wanted to be led into temptation? Let me give you some possible examples. You go to the bar. To the bar. You go to the bar, and let's say there's someone of the opposite sex there, and you want, you're tempted. 
Okay, you're, you're t the thought crosses your mind. The world today is a challenging environment for Christian believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Looking for answers? Grace Communion International local churches in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto offers a comforting environment for Christians in search of spiritual growth and development. Contact a local ministry. Attend a local GCI churches at the times listed on your screen.